Hey, what's up everybody? BDL44 coming at you in another video. Of course, another dark one, so bear with me. Uh, I want to get this right. Uh, I just got through watching footage of a gentleman in Sanford, Florida, I believe it was. I've never heard of Sanford, Florida. But from what I understand, someone said in the comments, it's the same uh, area where Zimmerman uh, murdered Trayvon Martin. Cold blood and got away with it scot-free. And, uh... It's a gentleman by the name of BKB Pole. He's an MC rapper out of, I believe, Florida. I've never heard of him. He's only 16 years old. Young fella's under underage. And, uh, you know, he was riding in a neighborhood, Sanford. Real nice, ritzy neighborhood. White neighborhood. Rich neighborhood, you know. A neighborhood that he would not be welcome in. Neighborhood I would not be welcome in. Um, he, he was riding his car uh, in that neighborhood. I guess he had burnt out, you know did something young something he shouldn't have been doing probably speeding through the neighborhood and you know the the residents came outside with their cameras and i guess uh decided they were going to terrorize this this child and uh make him feel completely and utterly unwelcome in their neighborhood scare him away vandalize his vehicle busted out the back window of his car dented the, the door of the window put the cameras in his face, got all in his face. These are like 50-year-old men, 50-year-old women, grown-ups, white people. This is a 16-year-old child. Just because he's black and looks like he's from a certain neighborhood and happened to find himself in y'all neighborhood, if you got that big of a problem with the kid, I get it. He's in your neighborhood. You don't know what he's going to do. You hear a lot of stories. You don't know what's going on out there. Maybe he's coming up there to shoot everybody. You don't know. If you listen to propaganda and believe the bull crap, then you probably believe he's there to assassinate you. But the reality is, you don't know what that kid was there for. But what you do know is, he was a kid. And if one of your kids come to our this neighborhood and gets treated like that you guys want the whole area mowed down you want to gentrify the entire neighborhood if something like that happens to your child in one of these neighborhoods a kid like that goes to your neighborhood is not safe how does that work how does that work if your neighborhood is safe then why the hell can't my child be in your neighborhood without being terrorized Y'all trying to protect yourselves, which y'all make it hard for anyone else. <laughs> Disgusting. You still have to deal with this type of behavior from grown-ups against a child. A child. Now, I don't know if they knew he was a child. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are afraid of black children because of, the, again, the narrative that's out there. And the behavior that's taking place in some areas. People got to take accountability for themselves, of course. But this, this this was a nasty, dark moment to witness. That's the best way I know how to describe it. It was a dark moment to witness because it shows us just how unwelcome we are without any questions being asked in a lot of cases. We're just unwelcome because of what we look like and because of how we're promoted to the people who don't know us, who hate us and fear us, and don't care to see us safe, don't care to see us protected in any way, and certainly don't care to see us safe around them. <laughs> Which is why I believe this country is so unsafe for black people, because people like them don't want this country to be safe for us. They like the fact that we're in bad places and they want us to stay in those bad places. And anytime we happen to find ourselves in places we ain't got no business being like places they're at. We end up seeing footage like this. I'm tired of it. As a black man who grew up with nothing, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of looking up every six months or so and seeing footage like this. <laughs> In a free country where we're supposed to be able to roam wherever we want to go, with the exception of certain places that are obviously given rules for trespassing and things of that nature, for which I don't know that neighborhood had 
don't care, to be completely honest with you. Because if it were a situation where it was trespassing again, you start to call the cops. You ain't supposed to be taking on the police duties on your own in your own hands. I didn't see a police officer in the area. It was just a bunch of citizens outside mobbing a black child for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. As if we haven't run into that scenario enough in our lives. Got to be in, in your neighborhood too. It's the wrong place at the wrong time because we run into a bunch of y'all. Tired of it, man. Tired of it. I hate that I have to say y'all. It shouldn't even be that, but it's always been that. In this country, that's what you've always made it. Let's just keep it real. I'm not here to be, be nice. I'm here to be frustrated. And look, I didn't really bring up the word racism, to be honest with you. I think it's obvious that that's something that you could bring up in a situation like this, but I think it's, it's low-hanging fruit. People stop listening when you say stuff like that. They literally stop listening, regardless if it's true or not. They don't want to hear it no more. That's another frustrating aspect of it. You can't deny the fact that racism plays a part in these type of things, whether you want to or not. Whether it's everybody standing outside or just one or two of them who are mobbing this child. You, you, you think that happens if he's Caucasian? No. He's driving a white Mercedes. No. It's not like he's driving a Civic down your street. That's a white Mercedes. I just... I don't think there's a, 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 a amicable solution for this type of behavior. That's what bothers me personally. Right? Because in situations like this, if you get mad, you want to lash out. You want to break something. But that makes our image worse. We're not allowed to properly respond to things like this. Not properly. Not like you want to. You can't lash out. Because if you lash out, you're ru ruining the image of the people that whose image have already been molded a certain way, which is why you're in this position in the first place if you're someone like myself. So let's say I, I get mad. I want to just lash out. I cuss people out. I say all kinds of horrible words about people who look like them. And guess what? Now the image of us looks even worse based on the image I've given you in response to the energy given to me. That's the conundrum black people are placed with in this country. We don't have a right to be offended for what happened to us. I mean, we do, but we get backlash for it every single time we get a chance. Every time we look up and say, yo, we don't like how we're treated, we get some resistance. Which is natural because the people who are retreating this way are the ones who are giving us the resistance. But nevertheless, that dynamic is very, very underrated and frustrating for me. I can't speak for everybody. I'll speak for myself. That's very, very frustrating. Because when you're frustrated, you just want to lash out. It feels good to be able to release the frustration. Right? It's part of the mental health healing process. Being able to say, yo, something happened to me and I get to release this anger in some way. Now, most of us need to find ways of doing that in positive ways. But what I'm saying is the conundrum that we face is if we were to release that anger in any way and you see it, now you can then mold that release to make it look like, let me make it look like I'm even worse, <laughs> which then takes that same energy that I've released, turn it into something I need to then release again because it's reapplied. This is a energy conversation. And it's exactly what the treatment does it provides a certain level of energy a resentment or forcing of forgiveness which black people have engaged in a lot to our detriment and it just becomes a situation where we just i don't know if we can and i say this from my own spirit i don't know if we can ever receive the respect that we deserve unless we rip that aspect of the band-aid off and that is a bad thing. There's nothing good about that. There's nothing good about that. That's the part that we all understand. Everybody understands. There's nothing good about black people finally just saying, enough, we've had enough, we're going to act up. But if this keeps happening, one of these generations of black people is going to do that. And it may not, it's not going to be ours. It probably ain't going to be our kids. But one of these years, 
one of these random 21, 22 some year, y'all are gonna see this type of behavior. Y'all showed that young man, it's gonna be met with a resistance that is not pleasant, okay? And we're talking about 500 years of pent up frustration and balancing out the conundrum that I just described of trying to behave dignified and within the confines of your manipulation versus what comes naturally to us which is basically being warriors fighters something that y'all snuffed out of us 500 years ago but not fully truth of the matter is black people have always been surrounded in this country that's the problem with everything that we try to accomplish illegally everything that we try to accomplish sneaky wise everything that we've ever tried to accomplish together gets snuffed out because we're surrounded by people like that there are more of them than us no matter what we're doing no matter how strong we are no matter how beautiful we believe our culture is how much we affect them and their culture and how much money they're able to make and how things spin in this country it doesn't matter because we're surrounded. That's why it never works for us. That's why the streets don't work for us. That's why they're able to Rico round us up and toss us in jails. That's why they're able to do all the things that they've done, mobilize their police force against us, and then make us look crazy for calling them out for it. This is exactly what it is. Nobody wants to call it like it is, but we know a great deal of the police force around this country mentality is to look at the blacks like they're the bad guys and the whites like they're the ones that need to be protected and if we're not going to be completely open about that and rip that band-aid off we are never going to be able to fix this without what it is that i'm saying is going to come on these generations i'm telling you and the, and, and the thing about what i'm saying to you is, is i'm sure you all know this when it comes to something drastic like that, it's not as simple as black and white. I think we all know this, but it's worth saying so that you understand I understand this. Race war ain't black and white. That's not how this works in 21, 30, no. It's not a race war. It's, it's a war between people. And the sadness is, you don't know who's who. You ain't gonna know who's who. There is no black and white in a situation like this it really is about who do you love and it should be everybody man it shouldn't be black or white it shouldn't be others it shouldn't be just us it shouldn't be just them it should be everybody on the side of good everybody on the side of working together because we all have a common enemy and that common enemy is nature believe it or not we could all be wiped out by a tsunami we could all be wiped out by a, any type of act of God and, and at the end of the day we would all have to work together to survive and for some reason a scenario like that came about which it will because this is earth and that's how it works in other words this thing is going to have an expiration date it doesn't spin forever and some generation of human beings or animals or something is going to have to deal with the end of this thing and at that point if they're still dealing with racism and isms and it, they're going to have to figure themselves out because they only got but so much time left That's going to be some generation's reality, even though that sounds like pie in the sky crap to us. It's real for someone, someday. I would like to think that we've worked all of this out by the time they reach that day. Whether it be five million years from now, hundred million years from now. I want to think that human beings have evolved to a place where they don't have these issues at all. So that when it's time for things to change and we need to make changes, drastic changes for ourselves, we can just shift our way out of here. Shift our way into another thing, work together and work around it. But as long as we're doing this black and white thing, as long as we're doing this, I don't trust you, I don't trust them because we believe them who manipulated us to believe that they aren't to be trusted instead of having conversations to know who the hell we're dealing with. Until we get to a point where we're smart enough to overcome the manipulation tactics that have been placed in this country for us to follow for years. Until we get to a point where we can maneuver outside of those things. We're going to always find ourselves at odds with one another. Because it's meant for us to be at odds with one another. As long as it's divide and conquer. As long as that still works. That's going to be what we see. 
I'm telling you, the internet, stuff like this, these type of conversations, they break that down. They break that down. And that's ultimately what we need to do as human beings. We need to break that down. We need to evolve past these isms, these racisms, this you don't belong in my neighborhood bullshit. We need to evolve past that. We need to evolve. That is primitive shit. You are swimming around. You need to grow some legs, grow some arms, step out the water, and walk around. Because right now, that's just some underdeveloped mindset nonsense, in my opinion. You identify that that's a young man. Then, if you really think of him as the threat that you believe him to be, you certainly don't walk that close to him. Let's just be Let's, let's be real, really real. If those people would have done that to the wrong 16-year-old boy, it'd have been about three or four dead white people outside. They'd have been shot up. So if he was really that much of a threat, and if he was what they thought he was, that wouldn't have went the way it went. They did that to someone they could bully. Let's just be honest. They did that to somebody they could get away with it with. Once they realized he wasn't that, that's when they started getting all this. I know this. Because I've been around enough cowards in my life to know a coward when I see one. There was a bunch of cowards outside there in that neighborhood. They wouldn't have confronted that kid by themselves. There's no way. And they wouldn't have confronted him in their neighborhood. They wouldn't have confronted him in a neutral neighborhood. They wouldn't have chased him out of there at night. They wouldn't have chased him out of there without their cameras. I know cowards when I see them. Anyway, I just wanted to vent about this. I'll probably call this a, a therapy session. That's what I'll do. Let it be what it is. It won't bring too much light to it. But this is my opinion. I hope you see it. Because I really do think if we continue this way, we will end up in a, in a war with one another. I do believe that. And while you're sitting back at war with one another, you do understand you got common enemies that are sitting back looking to plunder everything you're fighting over. I know that too. Y'all can keep being stupid like the only fight y'all got is with the kids that happen to fly down your neighborhood. But the reality is the fight that you really have is with yourselves and the practices that you continue to engage in that ultimately bring back the worst karma for your country. I speak of spiritual energy, I speak of wisdom, I speak of karma, and I speak of all of this knowing that we've built up a lot of the bad in those areas in this country. A whole lot. Based on what? The mentality that prompts someone to do exactly what those individuals did in that neighborhood. It's the same arrogance and, and cowardice that prompts this country to do a lot of the evil that it's done. To keep its own safety and preservation of life intact while leaving everybody else to be unsafe. It's the mentality that we've dealt with for a long time. It's gotten us thus far and it's going to tear us down just the same. I promise you this. So as I live. This doesn't go on for another 500 years. It does not. Especially with the, 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 the invention of the internet and the ability to see all of this. I'm telling you. Changes will be made based on what it is that we're seeing. This type of stuff over and over again. We're seeing it too often. People have to keep, black people have to keep showing up in these damn neighborhoods to make these people feel even more uncomfortable after doing stuff like this. You know, that's what's gonna happen. They'll be there in a few hours. I don't know, man. I'm just tired of this. I'm tired of being surrounded. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't hate white people. I really don't. In fact, I love a lot of people, a lot of people, but I hate being surrounded. I don't feel safe. I don't feel wanted here. I don't feel welcome here. I don't feel home here. I never have. And I've said that in this camera more than once. I don't know if there's a solution. I don't expect people who are surrounding me to look at me and say, 
you got this right. And not only that, but you continue to be welcome here. No, they're going to say, well, get out of here. If you don't like it, leave. But what I'll say is you're not surrounded. If you were in a position I was in, if you saw things the way I do, you wouldn't say what you say. You wouldn't. And the beauty, beautiful thing about me is if I were in the position you were in, I wouldn't say what you say. That's why I like being me, because I wasn't raised to align with that mentality in any way. Which is why I can speak the way that I do. And I hope I can connect with people outside of this place who don't think like us either. Because it needs to be documented that not every American was with some of the stuff that America did. We benefited off of it just the same, but we didn't like the energy that came with it. I did not. A lot of stuff. A whole lot. And that's only the stuff they allowed me to know. I didn't seek out the knowledge. I got to give myself no credit for that. But at the same time, a lot of that stuff was depraved to the people. We don't really know. I'm brainwashed to, to, to worship the flag and stuff like that, but to respect the bad energy that was put out by the people who who respected that flag, that wasn't something that we were taught to do. That wasn't brainwashed into our minds to resent the bad things that we did. I freely thought of that one by myself, man. And I live with it every day. So, that's what I wanted to say, man. I want to get up here and express my frustration with that situation. Should that young man have been in that neighborhood? No. No. To keep your black ass out of the neighborhoods, you ain't safe. You ain't no safer there than you are in your own neighborhoods. Black people, stop going there unless you got purpose there, real purpose there. They'll kill you just like your own will. My name is BDL44. I thank y'all for watching. I'm out.